What's going on guys, today I'm going to show you some amazing tools to cut out complicated images here in Photoshop. So let's get started. What's going on guys, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com, home to editing tutorials, camera gear reviews, tricks and tips to make photography and photo editing a whole lot easier. So if that sounds like something that you'd be into, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more videos just like today. Now for anybody who's wanting to cut out an image, Photoshop is likely the application that they're going to be using and there is a ton of great tools that you can use to cut out a photo in Photoshop. But the things that are not so obvious is the ways to cut out complicated images like tree branches or hair because the the typical tools that you'd use like the quick selection tool, the pen tool, the marquee tools aren't going to work very well to cut out little tiny edges like the ones that are found on tree branches or in somebody's hair or something like that. So in today's tutorial I'm going to be sharing two effective techniques that I love to use to cut out any photo in Photoshop with a complicated background. So the first one that we'll be talking about is blend if and then we'll be talking about calculations. Each of these methods are not as commonly used for cutting out backgrounds so this may be the perfect answer to all of your Photoshop struggles that you might be having currently. So with that, let's hop into Photoshop and start figuring out these two great methods to cut out complicated images. So the first example that we'll be using today is this photo of Mount Fuji and I want to replace the sky and I want to add this nicer sunset sky into this photo. Now of course I'm going to have to cut out all of these tree branches up here in the sky and there isn't an easy way to go about that with the basic selection tools that you might be using currently. So for this example I'm going to show you the blend if sliders. Now besides cutting out a background the blend if sliders are a great tool to utilize for blending in color to your photo or different exposure values and if you want to learn more about the blend if sliders and how you can apply them into your work Click up on the corner now to see my previous tutorial on blend if sliders. But for this example, we're just wanting to use them to cut out this sky. So because I want to edit this photo non-destructively, I'm going to duplicate my background layer by pressing Command or Control J. Now I'm going to turn off my background layer so I just have my layer 1 visible. Now to access those blend if sliders, you just have to bring up your layer styles dialog box and you can do that by double clicking on your layer. Now your layer style box will come up and right here under blending options is our blend if sliders. So for this tutorial we're only going to be focusing on the this layer slider because we're wanting to affect this layer, we're wanting to affect our photo. Now what the blend if sliders allow you to do is select and alter the transparency of different highlight and shadow values within your image. So for example if I go and click on this slider right here in the highlights, I can drag this down and now you see the highlighted area of my image has become transparent represented by those checkerboards. If I continue to do that it's going to continue to make more and more transparent until now all that's left are those really dark shadowed areas. Now that's all great that the blend of sliders get rid of everything but how can we use them to selectively pick what we want to get rid of? Now if we go right beside our blend if slider here, you're going to notice that we have a gray option. If I click on gray, it'll drop down and you see red, green, and blue. Now those are representing our color channels and if you aren't familiar with your color channels, you can find those here in your channels tab. And I have a tutorial about the color channels and cutting images out with them already. You can find a link to that down below this video. But essentially in a nutshell, these color channels just have varying levels of contrast representing a certain color range for each channel. So going through all of these, you notice that the blue channel has the most contrast between our branches and the sky. So the sky is pretty much white and the branches are basically black. So that means that Photoshop would have a really easy time to make that selection and be able to tell the difference between what is the sky and what are the branches. So now with that in our heads, we can go back to our layers, double click on our layer, bring up our layer style box. And because our blue channel had the most contrast, I'm gonna change my blend if range from gray down here to blue. And now our blend if sliders change to blue, except they still operate the exact same way. Except now they're gonna be going off of the contrast that was found in that blue channel. So since our sky is blue, that makes life really easy for us. So I can click on this slider and just start to drag it down and notice how my sky starts to become easily transparent without any problems. Now if I keep going, things are looking pretty fine and you might be thinking that looks great right there. But I'm gonna just create a new layer underneath here and fill it with black. And now you can start to see some of the issues that are showing up. 
there's quite a bit of fringing left over around our tree branches and it doesn't look very good yet. So double clicking on my layer to bring up my layer style again, I can continue to bring down my blend if slider, but it starts to really degrade the quality of what's being cut out. There's even some areas that are just completely chopped up altogether. So we want to feather our blend if selection. To feather a blend if selection, all you have to do is hold Alter Option and click on the point that you're wanting to feather out. So in this case, I'm gonna drag this all the way back to the beginning. I'm gonna drag my slider back until it's just starting to get rid of some of that area around the trees. Something like this looks pretty good to me. So I still have lots of detail there. Nothing's getting destroyed quite yet. And now I can hold Alter Option, click on that highlight point, and I can continue to drag, and that's going to add a feather to my blend if selection. And so now we are, are keeping way more detail than we were able to before. I'll continue to drag out. And then if it's still not quite getting the job done, we can drag our other slider down just a little more to really close the gap. And now that's looking really, really good. So with that, I'll click OK. And now we have a really nice selection around our tree branches. They've been cut out exactly like we're wanting to. Now the problem being now is, of course, our mountains also got selected, but luckily we can use the blend if sliders once again to bring back in those mountains. So this time I'm going to create another layer from my background layer. So pressing Command and Control J on my background layer, dragging it up above my black layer here. Make that layer visible once again. And I'm going to call this one just to mountain and I'll call this one to tree branch so we don't get confused. And now with my mountain layer, I'm going to double click on that and we want to do the same thing once again, except now we can just stick within our graze tab. So looking up here at my mountain, I can start to drag down this until it's getting cut out nicely, something like that. And then I'm gonna hold alter option, click and drag that out until I have a nice feather, making sure that everything is gone off the horizon, making sure to do as much as you can without losing all of the detail in the mountain and the other highlighted areas that you wanna keep. So something like this is looking good for me. And then now with that, we can add a layer mask to this layer. And since we have our tree branches already cut out, we can just paint black onto this layer mask at 100% opacity. And those tree branches are gonna stay in there. It's gonna get rid of all that stuff that we didn't quite manage to get rid of ourselves. And then we can just go and manually feather out this area over here. Now the final issue that we're running into is of course the water down here. So we can once again duplicate that background layer, click and drag that up, turn that layer back on, add a layer mask, press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask, make everything transparent. And now I can just go and paint in all the areas I want to keep. So now that we've used the blend of sliders to cut out our entire image, we've had to use a few different layers to get the exact spots that we want to select. Now that we've done that, we can go and add our new sky into place. So just deleting this black layer, I'm gonna go grab my sunset sky, grab my move tool, drag and drop that over into my image here, position it where I want it to go, and maybe I'll flip it just so the light matches. And now just like that, we have successfully used the blend if sliders to accurately cut out our leaves and our horizon with pretty much no manual labor involved. All we had to do was move around a couple sliders, and to me, that is pretty awesome. So again, the blend if sliders are a really easy way to cut out complicated images in Photoshop. So now let's go and look at a second powerful and easy option that you can use to cut out even more complicated images. So now the next tool that we're gonna discuss is called Calculations. And Calculations is very similar to Channels, except it merges two channels together to add a ton of contrast to make even more simple selections of a complicated image. So to access your calculations, all you have to do is go up to Image and down here to Calculations. Now once you click on that, your blending mode will likely be set to Normal or something like that, and you'll have these options here. So Source 1, our layer is our background layer here and our channel is set to the red channel from our channels tab that we talked about earlier in the tutorial. Now at my source two, again, the source is the background layer and it's once again affecting the red channel. So you can mix and match these channels as much as you'd like. So you can click on the red channel, you can select the gray channel, you can select the green channel, blue channel, whatever works for you. But the name of the game in this case is you're just wanting to find the channel that has the most contrast. In this case, it's looking like the blue channel. So the beauty about the calculations is that if there's two channels that have a ton of contrast, you can merge them both together and have one 
crazy epic awesome channel that you can use to create your mask from. In this case, going through the options, it seems like blue and blue will work the best for me. Now to add even more contrast that you don't have the option of doing with the channels method alone is this blending option. So since our blending mode is set to normal, I can go down here and select a different blending mode to add more contrast to those channels. So the blending mode that I really like to use in this case is overlay. It adds a ton of contrast into your photo and really makes things look exactly like you're wanting without any extra adjustments or stuff that just take up more time. Once you're happy with that, you wanna make sure your result is set to a new channel, and then we'll go ahead and click OK. Now you're probably thinking, what the heck just happened? Where did all of my work just go? But if we go over here to our Channels tab, you'll notice that we have now an Alpha 1 channel, and that is the new channel that we just created. So with this Alpha 1 channel, this is what we'll be basing our layer mask off of. Now the black and white image that you're looking at currently is going to represent our final layer mask. So of course, we don't wanna have these gray areas, we want to have things just solid black and solid white so that we have a really clean selection around what we want. What you can do is grab your brush tool and just go in and paint along the areas that you want to add in. So in this spot, I want to add more black. So I'm, I can just go and paint black along there straight onto my Alpha 1 channel and it's going to black all of those gray areas out for me. But the problem with this is when you start to come along the edges of these tree branches or this tree trunk, you have to be really delicate and it's very easy to be like, oops, I just went off the side. And then you end up having to do a whole lot of refining that is annoying and time consuming. So there's a really easy way to just brush around where you want and not have to worry about coloring inside the lines, so to speak. So with my brush tool selected, I can go up here to my mode and change it from normal down here to overlay. Now I wanna make sure my foreground color is set to black and I'm gonna paint over the black areas in my photo. Now watch what happens when I go to paint along the edge of my tree. As I paint along the edge here, it's just going to make the black areas even more black, but the parts that are white, they're gonna remain white. I don't have to be careful about going over the edge. By using this overlaid blend mode, I can just paint over the tree exactly where I'm wanting, and it's gonna stay within that black range that we're wanting to paint in. So I'll just continue to do this all the way around my image. Sometimes the really white areas on your tree trunk, you'll have to go over a couple times just to make sure that everything works perfectly but you can continue to go through and everything will look really good once you finish it all up. Now in this case, you see how there has started to be a bit of gray around here in the white areas, and that's because the white isn't fully white. It's a little bit of gray in there, so using the black brush is just making it even darker. What I can do in that case is just like we're doing with the black, we can also paint white. I'll change my foreground color to white and now I can paint onto that sky around my tree trunk and it's not gonna affect any of that black but it's gonna get rid of any of the gray in my sky. So just doing that, you can see how gray my sky actually was. Even though it looked like it was white, there's actually a ton of gray that was left over. So now with that blending mode, I can just go through and paint exactly where I'm wanting, not have to worry about those tree branches or anything because it's going to just affect those white areas that we're wanting to deal with. Now this part can be a little bit time consuming, especially if you have a lot of branches that you need to paint around. So I'm just gonna skip ahead. I think that you guys got the gist of what's going on. I'll meet you at the next step of the process. Okay, so now I've gone through with my brush tool on the overlay blend mode and I've painted exactly what I want my layer mask to look like. So now my alpha channel is ready to go. It's ready to become a selection. So to turn this into a selection, I'm gonna hold command or control and click on my alpha one layer channel thumbnail and now Marching Ants will appear and Photoshop has turned this into a selection for us. I'll go back to my Layers tab and with my layer selected, I'm going to just add a layer mask. Now this is the opposite of what we're wanting, so I'll just press Command or Control I with my layer mask selected to invert that layer mask. And now we have a perfect cutout of our tree and our tree branches using our calculations tool. So at this point, now I can go and add in my new sky. So I'll just grab the sky image, drag and drop this into my tree, drag that behind there. Trade that up. And all of a sudden I have completely transformed my photo from a pretty boring looking sky to something a little bit more interesting just by cutting out the tree. Now, if I zoom in here, you can see that all of those little details on the leaves are looking really good. Nothing has gotten destroyed or has become sort of particle-y looking. Everything looks really clean to me. The only issue being 
this little spot down here is the grass. So to make this grass look a little bit better, I'm going to utilize the blend if sliders and we'll effectively be merging everything that we learned in this video together into one photo. So I'm going to grab my layer zero here, which is my tree layer. I'm just going to press command or control J to duplicate that layer. I'm going to right click on that layer mask and I'll press delete layer mask. So now my image is back to normal. Now what I want to do is grab my blend if sliders once again. So I'm going to double click on this layer zero copy. My layer style dialog box will appear and I'm just going to leave my blend if to gray and I'm going to just hold alter option, click and drag that out and keep going until that area of the grass is looking pretty good to me. So I don't want to go too crazy because I want to be able to see that grass still, but still be getting rid of that sky. So something like this looks pretty good to me. It just looks like this grass is really thin or maybe blowing in the wind or something like that. So once you're happy with that, you can click OK. And of course, we don't want that to be affecting our entire image. So I'm going to add a layer mask, press Command and Control I. And now I'm just going to go and add that grassy area back in at the bottom of our photo. And just like that, we have completely recovered all of that grass. Now, of course, you could go and refine the blend if adjustment a little bit more to have even less showing from behind of the original image. But in my opinion, I think this looks really good and it's completely unnoticeable. So with that, you've just discovered two new powerful and effective ways to cut out complicated images in Photoshop. And I hope you start to apply some of this stuff into your own work to really elevate your photo game. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference. And also hit that subscribe button to keep that photo editing learning going. If you're completely new to cutting out images in Photoshop, then make sure to see my previous tutorial about the three easiest methods to cut out any photo in Photoshop that you can find via the link in the description below. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to cut out complicated images in Photoshop. Again, my name is Brennan from BeWillCreative.com. You can find me on Instagram at BurnWills. And with that, I'll catch you back here next time. See you then. Now, if you want to keep that photo editing learning going, make sure to click right here for my latest video or click right here for a video that YouTube is recommending you. If you want to subscribe, then make sure to click on my face right now and that will subscribe you to my channel. And with that, I'll catch you back here next time.